So if I am already in the lift and somebody is entering, before they ask me the question of does your dog bite, I sort of chime in and say, do you bite dogs? And that sort of breaks the ice. Good morning and welcome to the ninth AMA session or Ask Me Anything. My name is Kangshi Mehta. I'm the moderator of this session. I'm also a member of the Pet Chef team and this is a partnership with Thinkly. Today we have with us Mohit Arora who's an advocate and Nakul Ruparel who's also a co-founder of Pet Chef and a pet parent. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's begin. Uh, Kangshi, it's a pleasure being here. Hi. Thanks so much Kangshi for doing this. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so let's begin. What is the law for owning pets and or animals in <clears throat> India? What do articles 48 and 51A subsection G of the Indian constitution state? So we start with a very heavy topic. We start yes. with the constitution. Okay, so um, <clears throat> uh, good morning, everybody. So now um, the law on animal rights in India are actually very extensive. It starts from the constitution of India and then it uh, continued with central uh, government having a uh, uh, enacted several laws uh, which range from prevention of cruelty to uh, wildlife and uh, wildlife protection and also certain <clears throat> i'm sorry and also certain municipal uh, municipal uh, laws that are there for uh, protection of animals for uh, uh, for anti defect uh, for anti defecation by animals and uh, it uh, there are certain rules that have been uh, 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 have been enacted under these relevant acts so um, now article uh, now as far as the constitution is concerned there is uh, so we start with article 21 article 21 is uh, right to protection li uh, right to life and right to protection and uh, the constitution <clears throat> though does not uh, specify that animal rights or animal life is protected under the constitution but there are several supreme court judgments which have now given the right to life to animals as well and uh, a protection of animals, uh, uh, the life of animals, protection of their rights is now accepted and acknowledged as a, uh, 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 a constitutional right of animals. Uh, article 48 uh, and Article 48A, uh, they refer to two separate uh, kinds of animals. Uh, 48, Article 48 refers to cattle and and right, uh, Article 48A refers to protection of wildlife. The one AG uh, is uh, refer it, it basically says that it will it is a, uh, a fundamental duty of uh, sorry it's a uh, uh, it's a the state to protect and to improve natural environment and it includes wildlife uh, and have compassion for living creatures which in in a sense includes humans animals and 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 uh, uh, birds, plants. It uh, the constitution, uh, the uh, Supreme Court has now extended that definition of living creatures to birds and anim uh, birds and uh, plants as well. <clears throat> uh, then there are other laws. Now there are central laws like prevention of cruelty, as I mentioned earlier, which uh, uh, makes it an offense if there is any cruelty to animals. There are uh, there are various provisions of the act which not only make it. <clears throat> But they have also made it very clear that what kind of uh, 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 cruelty uh, committed on an, any animal, it's not just a dog or a, or a cat or any domesticated animal, on any animal, um, uh, uh, there are offenses, there are, uh, I mean, there, are, uh, there is a punishment, whether it's imprisonment or it's fine, but it's all provided under the Act. <clears throat> then we come to the wildlife protection. Wildlife protection is obviously for the protection of uh, the wildlife, and uh, uh, there, are, there, there are primarily for 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 the purpose of this discussion, uh, there is uh, there are six schedules to that act, which uh, list down certain animals, birds, and plants, which cannot be domesticated. Uh, those are properties of the state and uh, 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 nobody can have them at their houses or in captivity, except for the re except for the purposes that are provided under the Act, for example, zoos. Then there is uh, an IPC, the, the Indian Penal Code. The Indian Penal Code has certain sections which uh, make it uh, uh, punishable for, for, uh, 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 for cruelty to animals. Then there is the uh, and the most important actually the most important act or the rules for the purpose of this discussion is the animal birth control dogs rules, 
which really set down the, uh, the, the basis of uh, protection of dogs, protection of, uh, uh, of the way they will be treated, whether it's in captivity or, uh, or on the street, uh, and, and uh, how the sterilization will happen, how will uh, they be feeded, all of that is really provided in that rules. So I think when, when we come to it, we'll discuss it in more detail. So then, so that's so basically, then are there, what are, what are the provisions of the Indian constitution that endeavors to protect animals? Uh, so Kanchi, uh, primarily, uh, as I said earlier, there's article 21, mm. 48A 48 and 51AG. Uh, Correct. They are, uh, what the, 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 um, the famous of the constitution, uh, the idea was that, the, the idea was that they will have a general principle in the constitution for uh, the parliament to enact laws that will protect uh, 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 humans or protect animals. Uh, with that empowerment from the constitution, these acts have now come into place. That is the prevention of cruelty or or even within the municipal, uh, municipality act there are uh, provisions which uh, which ensure that animals are not uh, are are not ill treated. And then, like you mentioned before, then what do section four twenty eight and four twenty nine of the Indian Penal Code provide for? Okay, so so uh, uh, sections four twenty eight, four twenty nine are primarily for cattle. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, and and uh, uh, what they well, what it really provides is that if there is a any uh, uh, ill treatment of cattle uh, 428 is that if the value of the cattle is up to rupees 10 uh, if there is a, uh, uh, a cruelty that has committed has been committed on a cattle whose value is less than rupees 10 then there is a punishment and fine section 429 provides that if there is a cruelty to an animal whose value is up to rupees 50 then there will be a punishment and fine. Now I understand that the value of these cattle are too too low, but yes. uh, uh, we need to understand IPC was also uh, enacted in 1860, and that hasn't really changed, I guess. That hasn't changed. I mean, now the new IPC has. Uh, uh, I mean, they have at least uh, gazetted it. Now let's see when it comes sure. into enforce. Now sure. coming back to owning of pet animals is <clears> in <throat> housing society. Yeah. Uh, mostly yeah. what people do own are dogs and cats. So yeah. what are the regulations of the Animal Welfare Board of India or the AWPI yeah. for yeah. owning pets in a housing society? Okay. Uh, so you mean um, you mean uh, uh, owning of a, of, of a pet by, a, of, by an owner and not by a community? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so see, the... Uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, Animal Welfare Board has come into uh, has been uh, authorized to uh, uh, to come out with rules and regulations by the uh, under the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. Uh, they have pursuant to that power. They have uh, um, uh, uh, enacted the Animal Birth Control Dog Rules 2000 2001. They realized that that uh, the rules were completely ineffective. Uh, they were uh, uh, fl flagrant. Um, uh, uh, there was the, uh, there was lack of implementation. People were flouting them. Therefore, they came up with a stringent law, which was the Animal Birth Control Rules, uh, Dog Rules, two thousand twenty-three. Now, as per that, uh, <laughs> as per those rules, uh, they have broken down the rules into two bits. One is pets that are owned by a flat owner. Or a, or, a, or a member of a RWA or uh, and stray animals. Uh, stray animals could be a community animal where probably they, they are on the street but are being taken care by a community. And uh, they have the, the rules make it very clear that one, the animal uh, has to be taken care of, whether it is the community, uh, community animal or by the uh, flat owner. Uh, sterilization, vaccination, and um, feeding of the animals is the responsibility of either the flat owner or the RWA. There have to be designated feeding spots. There have to be, which have to be kept clean. They have to ensure that there is no litter. This, this is, I'm talking about in, in, in the case of a stray animal. Uh, 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 they have to ensure that there is food, water is provided for. And if there is any animal that is found to be uh, uh, 
uh, getting you know maybe getting violent or getting uh, becoming a nuisance for the uh, for the for the community or for the uh, 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 or for the uh, general public <clears throat> the act the rules provide that the uh, it is the responsibility of the RWA to uh, to inform the authorities and the authorities under the rules as well as under the other provision of the prevent uh, prevention of cruelty to animals have the right to take possession of the animal take it to a kennel rehabilitate and uh, a, and once they uh, once the animal has been found to shed its violent uh, uh, nature uh, bring it back to the community uh, so that is what the rules provide um, for the purpose of um uh, uh for the purpose of flat owners the rules also are are in similar in nature it is just that the owner uh, is prim primarily responsible to take care of the animal at its own cost uh and uh, they have made it sure that it is the responsibility of the flat owner uh just to add one different uh, uh, aspect to this the uh, um ipc um provides for under section 191 ba oh sorry sorry the municipal uh, the municipal, mumbai municipal corporation act that uh, uh, that is applicable for bombay under section 191 ba provides that if there is an animal that has that is a nuisance to the to the public the municipality has the right to take possession of the animal <clears throat> and um, uh, uh, keep it in a kennel ensure that it is fair ensure that it is it gets whatever uh, 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 help that it needs and uh, once it is found that it is no more a danger to the public it can be brought back to the community uh, so 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 for for example if there is an animal that is that is becoming a nuisance for a building for example then if there is a complaint that the then the bmc has the right to take possession of the uh, of that animal okay so now the uh, Kanchi, yeah. can i jump in sorry yes for a couple of things so more there's a lot to unpack here so let's sort of sort of break it down right so as a community or as a welfare association that's there uh, let's say a stray dog or a cat just shows up in the community by and nobody is feeding it per se so is that still the responsibility of that community to take care of that animal or it can just sort of be ignored and left there, right? Because what happens is even if there are members in a specific community that do not, uh, let's say are not too friendly towards the animal, uh, may not want to take care, right? But the animal refuses to leave. There will be a lot of nuances that do come up with, and I'm sure that there, there may be some provisions to act on these things. Uh, Nakul, that's actually a good question because um, uh, per se there is no law on that. What uh, what the uh, in one of the judgments that upheld the animal birth control rules, that's a Bombay High Court judgment. What basically uh, that that what the judgment said is that a uh, if there is an animal that is that the, a stray animal that walks into a RWA. And if that RWA does not want to take care of that uh, uh, of that animal, the uh, uh, what the RWA needs to do is to inform the authorities. That is what that act basically in in, in passing uh, mentioned. It is not that it has it, it is a law. It is just a it is more like an advisory that it is you you inform the local authority. The local authority will come and then they will take that animal. And, and uh, specific to these yeah. cases, the local authorities would be the municipal corporation or the police yeah, the or it, it depends. No, so so uh, it is the police. Uh, sorry, it is the municipal corporation because that is what the municipal uh, uh, Mumbai municipal corporation has been uh, empowered under the act as well as certain rules to ensure that animals uh, are uh, that stray animals are taken care of by them. So, like under the animal birth control rules, so sterilization, vaccination, feeding, and not feeding, but sterilization, immunization, is the responsibility of the municipal authority, is the local body. So the so now the AWBI has these regulations, and now it's up to the resident welfare associations to follow those guidelines. 
what are these yeah. RWAs not allowed to enforce? And then, then later on, Nathu can jump in and talk about his society and what guidelines that they have uh, that they have provided. Right. Uh, so, uh, uh, I, I, I mean, I will give an example of how the RWA was not following a rule, and then they were, in in a sense, forced to do so. This is again, I refer to that same judgment by the Bombay High Court, which was actually passed in uh, 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 late 2023. Uh, where one of the societies in New Bombay was uh, had was taking care of some animals, but because there was a bit of a uh, backlash by the members, uh, they they shut the designated animal feeder without relocating it. So they they just permanently shut it. And uh, the the Bombay High Court was very clear that the rules provide that if a designated feeding area is provided for. And for whatever reason, it is being shut, then it has to be relocated. And the Bombay High Court was very clear that they have to, the society will have to ensure that the relocation takes place and the animals are uh, uh, are feeded in that designated spot and at designated times so that there is no, uh, 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 the animals are not left in the lodge. Got it. So uh, to essentially broaden this, right, we live in a large community with close to 160 flats, of which let's say less than 10% are pet family. Now, uh, specific to these incidents, before I jump into that, uh, Mohit, you're talking about the Bombay High Court judgment. Would it be right to say that, uh, sorry, would it be right to say that uh, uh, the Bombay High Court judgment broadly can be adopted as a law or as a precedent for other judgments that might come up in the in similar cases matters across India, and two that the guidelines etc. set up by the Municipal Corporation of Bombay would also be similar in framework to other municipal corporations across India because we may have an audience that's living in different geographies, right? Oh, there sure. may be an audience from Bangalore, from Chennai, from Delhi, Gurgaon, sure. right? So sure. uh, broadly, would these be similar? Because I think the fundamental laws that are there, which is, uh, uh, which is designed by the union government, would apply sure. evenly across the board. Sure. Uh, so uh, two things, I mean, uh, as far as the Bombay High Court judgment is, is concerned, it is uh, at least for the state of Maharashtra, it is Maharashtra and Goa. It is law. Uh, as far as the other states are concerned, uh, it will be more of a persuasive in nature, not really a law, but it will be persuasive in nature. Though in the recent past, uh, um, primarily in the COVID, uh, COVID era, there were judgments that were being passed by the Madras High Court, which were being enforced all over India, though it did not have any legal sanctity to do so. Um, Secondly, as far as the the uh, uh, the provisions under the Bombay Municipal Corporation Act is concerned, uh, there is no central law. So there is no central law that that governs uh, uh, municipalities in general. Each uh, municipality is governed by its own law. Whether now, uh, for example, Maharashtra has its own central own own state law, and uh, but Bombay has a separate law. Nagpur has a separate uh, municipality law. Pune does not have a separate uh, municipality law. They follow the state law, but they the state law generally is in line with the Bombay Municipal Corporation or the Nagpur uh, uh, Municipal Corporation Act. Other jurisdictions also will have their own law. If not, then the state would have already provided for uh, for an act which is being uh, adopted by that municipality. Got it. So safe to say that as as our audience, uh, it's it's better to get informed in terms of what your laws, what the governing laws are in your specific geography, city, yeah. town, etc. Yeah. Right? Because these are specific conversations because we're based in Bombay. There'll be a lot yeah. of nuance in terms of specific to Bombay, but yeah. it will be best yeah. to get informed if you're in Bangalore, Chennai, Delhi, Gurgaon, Hyderabad, wherever. So just Absolutely. get informed in terms of what the local municipal laws are governing yeah. these specific issues as pet parents. Sure. I, I, now, yeah. So now coming to, uh, you know, we started from the country as a whole, came down to the state, came down to the municipality. Now we, we want to go down to a community, let's say a housing complex, gated community, a building for that matter, housing society. Now, uh, 
very very frequently at least in mumbai we get to see that you know there are housing societies that are creating overarching rules that are essentially preventive or preventive in nature for pet families to even move in or pet families residing there making their life unnecessarily difficult so it would be awesome if you can sort of guide us through on a broad level break that down in terms of what and what not a housing society can do and then we can you know get into specifics of you know what are the rules around habitation so keeping an animal in the house and what are the responsibilities of the parent what are the rules around feeding that animal and bear in mind this is a, a pet that is adopted by a specific family so not a community animal so specific to that you know habitation rules feeding rules uh you know walk play area community areas utilization in case of you know a pet poop so please in the common areas how is that to be dealt with etc uh so as far as uh, societies are concerned societies are rwas uh there is there are now numerous judgments of the supreme court which say that uh no society can come up with any law that prevents a flat owner from owning a, a for, from keeping a, a an animal as a pet as long as it is not uh, as long as the animal is not either banned i mean we we in the recent past we've seen that 23 breeds of dogs were banned um or they are listed in the wildlife protection act so if you are keeping any of those animals uh, obviously the, the the society will have the right to stop you from doing so because effectively they are following the law uh but what the supreme court says is that as long as none of the animals are either in the notified schedule of the of the uh, wildlife protection or otherwise they are banned you society cannot come up with any law which prevents you from keeping an animal now as far as um, animals being fed <clears throat> is concerned the animal birth the animal birth control dog rules make it very absolutely clear that it is the owner's responsibility to feed sterilize immunize um uh, uh the the society cannot stop you from feeding the animal i mean let's let's be very clear about it as long as that is not causing a nuisance to the members so what i would understand from that is that you cannot take your food in the common area and start feeding the dog uh because that that could form i mean that could be interpreted as a nuisance whether it is actually a nuisance sure. or not, that's a separate issue but it could be interpreted as a as a as a nuisance and therefore under the under the other laws the animal can be taken away uh as far as defecation and uh, uh defecation in public space whether it is a common area of the society or uh, or public space um there are notifications that are issued by most municipalities which um uh, which make it clear that if there is any defecation then it is the responsibility of the owner of uh, that animal to clean up after that uh, so you cannot just if the animal defecates in public it is you cannot just leave it and walk away it is your responsibility to clean up and uh, uh, the society generally cannot come up with any law i mean the the idea of all these laws and all these judgments is that they want to take away the power effectively from the society uh the idea is not to give the uh, the office bearers of the society the power to control the lives of the uh, of the of, of its flat owners as long as the the flat owners are within uh, within the uh, existing laws um and uh, therefore the supreme court in various judgments now says that no society can come up with laws uh, with bylaws or rules and regulations that stop a flat owner from from keeping a dog or uh, a flat owner who wants to give out it give his house on rent cannot say that i'm not going to give your house uh, cannot i'm not going to give a, uh, give my house on rent to a uh, to a, a person who has a dog or or a cat whoever it may be. sure, sure. Uh, uh, in writing they i mean if if first of all they will never do it in writing this all happens orally they can yeah. they can they will never ever put it in writing because if that happens then uh, there are other legal implications other legal problems that they fall under so Correct. they will never put it in writing this is that yeah, same right. example this is that same example that uh, if you eat non veg you cannot stay in a society nobody yeah. will ever put it in writing so i'll give you some uh, funny uh, examples of these situations yeah. right so yeah. to the first one where uh, you 
uh, a flat owner cannot sort of bar uh, or say that I will not rent to a pet family, or yeah. a society cannot say that a specific flat cannot be rented to a pet family. Yeah. Now, as a pet family, you can always use that and say, you know, I don't, you cannot do this to me. But yeah. it's a nuanced question wherein would you really want to live in a community where you feel unwanted? Right. So it moves away from the legalese and it's more towards more sure. for human nature sort of thing. Sure. And I sure. think those gray areas and nuances are something that pet parents sure. as a whole have to deal with on a every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the other point uh, being that, for example, uh, if a dog is to defecate in a public area, yeah. it's sort of the most human thing to do is to clean up after yourself, right? Yeah. Because yeah. if you actually go out on the limb and say, you know what, if a dog is allowed to do so, you yeah. can very well, as they, there may be some twisted community member there who might come out and say, you know, it's okay for me to go and urinate in public areas. But you know, happens. as an extension of a similar thing and it happens. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, do the human thing. It's also yeah. the law aside. If you want to exist in a specific community peacefully, harmoniously, yeah, uh, you have to sort of create an environment, but both can coexist. Yeah. Uh, having said that, you know, do like little do's and don'ts. There was yeah. a video that's recently doing the rounds on social media of, I think this was in Noida somewhere where there is a kid in the lift, a mm -hmm. small dog. Uh, enters the lift with its parent and is uh, is active at that time, is aggressive or is excited at that time, doesn't realize there is a child in the lift already. Yeah. And uh, this pet parent lady who's holding the dog on a leash uh, is standing on the side and the dog suddenly realizes that there is a child in the lift. Yeah. Yeah. This child would be no older than 10 years old sure. and then lashes out at the child and then sort of bites. Now you can very clearly in the video see the child in pain, rubbing his leg, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What was what was I mean from the perspective of a video? I don't want to take a moral judgment, sure. but the pet parent at that point seemed very oblivious and felt looked like this is a normal thing, and the child was at fault, which should sure. not be the case, right? So uh, having these basic things about how to essentially use community areas yeah. is something that you can adopt on your own as a dog parent. For example, what we follow, and this is sort of community guideline we set up in our housing society, where we said that in case you are already in the lift with your pet, uh, if there is somebody else coming in, be nice, inform that there is a pet, the pet is not aggressive, pull the leash tight in case the other person is fearful, so as to not either make yourself uncomfortable or the other one feel, feel threatened in any way. Or sure. If you are outside and there is somebody already in the elevator, then please yes. ask for permission. It's the basic thing to do. Yeah. I tend to use humor in this as a pet parent. So if I am already in the lift and somebody is entering, before they ask me the question of does your dog bite, I sort of chime in and say, do you bite dogs? And that sort of breaks the ice. It's a funny way to essentially say, sure. look, my dog isn't going to threaten you unless you actually do something to accept it. Sure. You know, so these nuances matter. Uh, yeah. Having said that, laws are one side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. The other side of the spectrum is as a human being, as a part of a community, what yeah. can you do to make your life easier to be yeah. a good part of that community? Oh. Uh, leaving the laws aside, just do basic human things. Clean up after yourself, keep the dog on a leash. That's yeah. basic. Children don't know how to interact with dogs unless they've actually grown up with it. So yeah. be careful around them, etc. Et yeah. I agree. I think, I think uh, also what uh, the other guidelines that usually RWAs want us, want pet parents to follow is that if, if you know that your dog is not particularly friendly, um, I think the dog needs to be on a muzzle. I think that's a given guideline. Um, or, 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 and that members of society should tell other people that the dog is not really friendly. So please sure. keep away. I think, I think those are also, um, I'm not sure if it's a law, but I think it's also, again, common courtesy. Which brings me to the next question. Now I'm talking about... Uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry Kanshi, I'll just, I'll just uh, intervene. No. I, I, only on the point of muzzling. Now, mm -hmm. uh, muzzling is not something that is, is acceptable. Uh, in, in, in the sense that um, Supreme Court actually has been, has been uh, uh, divided on this. Um, there has been one, one uh, line of uh, thought which says that under Article 21, uh, 
uh, as much as it is the right of a, a, a right to life of an animal, but it is also the right of life to a human. So if there is a dog which is violent uh, or has the tendency of lashing out, then it is from the perspective of the right of life of a human, it is uh, 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 it is better that the dog is muzzled. The okay. other side, the other line of thought is that uh, right to life of, of an animal also means a right to uh, freedom. So muzzling uh, 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 restricts that freedom of that of that dog. I mean, it could be for anything. It could be. I mean, he might just be licking his lips for all you know. But it is still a freedom. the The muzzle does not allow that animal to do that, and therefore, the, that line of thought says that no muzzling should not be not should not be made a a, a, a rule. Uh, and therefore, there in fact there was the two thousand one rules of the animal uh, birth control rules. Uh, 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 stated that muzzling of an, of a, of an animal that is violent uh, uh i mean they 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 made muzzling of of a, of a violent animal as a law which the supreme court in one of the judgments uh, 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 struck it down but anyways under the new rules they have they have not kept muzzling as a as a requirement so if a society is coming up with a rule that an animal uh, uh, in the society a pet in an in a society uh, needs to be muzzled. Then, really speaking, it is uh, uh, it is not in accordance with law. I'm not saying okay, it's so I, uh, I'm not saying it's illegal, but it's it, uh, you know there is no uh, uh, there is no you know I in a sense a, a, a real uh, a defined law on it. Uh, but but from all ethical moral grounds, if one sees it, I think it's 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 inhuman. Okay, so it's just basically up to the pet parent. The RWA cannot enforce this rule. No, on your dog by muzzling. No. Okay, fair enough. Now, um, coming to a, fa a pet parent family and not a community dog, what are the protocols if a pet is considered aggressive or has attacked members of society? What are the protocols? By the, what should the pet owner do, and what what should the R what what does the RWA do? Sure. So the uh, so the um, uh, if if a, if a, if a pet is um, uh, uh, violent if it has bitten or if it if it uh, uh, chases uh, uh, humans or, or or i mean i mean human is just one aspect of it if there is a if, a, if there is a pet which has bitten another dog or it has uh, it it uh, randomly chases other animals within the community or within uh, uh, on the on on public street uh, it is the responsibility of the rwa to bring it to the notice of the uh, of the authorities, the authorities will then will follow the uh, protocol where they will come. They will take the dog away, keep it in a kennel, rehabilitate, and then once it's uh, once they feel that the the anim uh, the violent instincts have uh, have have passed over, they will then bring it back to the community. They have not clarified how long do they keep the no, dog I mean, in the. I mean, and they can't because uh, at the end of the day, how long does the rehabilitation process takes? It 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 all depends on. It's very uh, relative and subjective. It's, 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 in that yeah. Okay, so the the uh, uh, I mean, I mean, it's very difficult to give up your uh, to give up your pet. Oh, and then and, so and Kamshi, actually, yeah. We can jump in and actually. So uh, to everyone who doesn't know, Kamshi and me are married. We co-parent uh, together a golden retriever along with our daughter Nima. And in our society in itself, there is sort of an example that might be useful and informative to people to talk about. We had, uh, this was a couple of years back, we had a lovely golden retriever in our building. Now, by nature, most people would know golden retrievers are probably the most harmless breeds of dogs around. And this particular dog was also similar in nature. Very, very friendly. A one and a half year old daughter who loves dogs, you would play with it very, very frequently. Now, uh, without, uh, uh, you know, setting any biases here, that dog was usually kept on a muzzle whenever it went for a walk. Now, uh, both the pet parents were uh, lawyers, ironically, and uh, led very busy lives. So they had essentially hired an agency, dog walking agency, to walk their dog twice a day. Now, in this one specific incident, the agency sent a pressure to walk the dog who had zero experience. So this was her, this was a lady, this was her first time 
वॉकिंग डॉग शी केम इन शी टूक द डॉग फॉर अ वॉक फॉर सम रीजन द मजल फॉर द डॉग वॉज इन ऑन द डॉग हैड बॉल विद इट and on the way back uh, the dog had the ball with it and for some reason this dog walker lady decided to take the ball from the dog and the dog sort of lashed out at her and bit her on the head now as a community that we live in with 160 flats uh, uh 95% of the community members have never had a pet so for them this was a very uh, scary sort of prohibitive sort of incident that had happened and got everyone's alarm bell sort of ringing and the way the community basically the society chapters and treasurer etc sort of banded together uh, and uh, started targeting the pet family uh, without having a lot of context about what happened why it happened etc and uh, what eventually unfolded was the fact that the lady who was walking the dog with a pressure didn't have any idea uh, in terms of how to deal with animals to the clarification that the dog was actually wearing a muzzle not because the dog was aggressive but because the dog was an idiot and you would eat everything on the road which would include rotten shoes if it would find it so as pet parents what they had chosen to do was to muzzle the dog on walks to avoid it from eating garbage now what was done in you know with a very pure heart sort of reason signaled something as to the community and what we sort of took away from it was that to be sort of inclusive in terms of educating the community when you have a pet with them so the way we started dealing with our pet our pet basically louis came home post this incident had happened and we sort of made very conscious efforts to essentially familiarize our dog with the community and allow the community members to essentially familiarize themselves with our pet to make it easier for all of us to coexist in that space uh in this specific incident because the family both the pet parents were lawyers they were legally in a way able to handle this situation calm things down otherwise there were talks of you know police cases being filed all of those things but essentially what the pet family did eventually they were on right within a month they sort of managed this matter internally and got the community you know reassured that this was not uh, an aggressive dog uh, this was basically a dog that had been treated wrong and had lashed out in its very own nature the way it is meant to but as a community we did not treat them well uh, and the pet family chose to leave the way we sort of got our community to bandy together to be become more accepting of pet parents was we sort of i i led that sort of thing where we were a little conniving and what we said was that pet parents so to speak tend to fall into a higher income bracket uh having them in your community sort of appreciates the value of your property if you are there and it just makes sense for you to do that if you disallow pet parents to enter your community or not rent flats there or buy flats there you are essentially reducing the population that can buy flats in your flat, uh, this thing and you are sort of uh, removing a higher income group that can actually come into it and that sort of struck a chord with every member of the society and that worked having said that i think as a pet parent it is your responsibility to go out there and help the community accept your pet and your family and vice versa the day you start doing that you will see that a lot of friction around this reduces automatically fair enough uh yeah i remember that incident very well and it was quite unfortunate what happened and they had to leave i think also i i mean again it's not the law but it is also essential for people to understand the a little bit unfamiliarized with dog behavior and then probably they could understand or deal with the situation a little better uh now coming back to I think a lot of people want to talk about this about feeding stray dogs. What you already covered a little bit, but let's sort of like expand because there are people or uh, the some of the questions that are coming in live are asking, um, what are the laws and guidelines stated for members of society feeding stray dogs? So, uh, I mentioned this earlier that under the uh, animal birth control dog rules, uh, the RWA is responsible for meeting designated spaces. where the animal will be feeded uh there will be uh the, the rules make it very clear that there will be no littering there will be uh, uh the food will be enough food will be given to the uh, to the to the animals 
uh, if there are uh, if there are uh, uh, different kinds of animals, there could be dogs, there could be cats. Then you have to provide different food uh, for for, uh, for 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 the for for the kind of animals that are coming. And uh, uh, if there is a uh, if uh, I mean they, that is not something that they have really uh, made it uh, mandatory. But what uh, it says is that the society, the RWA, may uh, provide for a designated spot for defecation, so that it becomes easier and cleaner uh, environment for the animals to defecate. Uh, that is as far as the street animals that are being taken care of by a community. If there are street dogs which are not taken care of by a community, then the municipality really takes takes over. They are not on the street because uh, obviously the municipality cannot keep an eye on every street dog. So they are taken in a, in a space where they're kept in kennels and then they're taken care of by, uh, by the municipality. So, so basically the <clears throat> RW feeding if a member of society has decided to feed stray dogs yeah the rwa can cannot come and say no you cannot cannot do this you you can the law states that you can feed stray dogs no what the law says is that if there is a community that is that wants to feed an animal then it is once the community adopts an animal then that it is the community's responsibility to feed that animal feed uh, feed that animal and do whatever it's required, sterilization, immunization, and all of that. If there is a particular person who wishes to feed animals, uh, there is really no law that prevents him from doing that. But there are uh, uh, under different provisions of the IPC, that person can actually be stopped from doing that. Uh, because defecation, uh, for, uh, littering in public space, is a, um, uh, a is an offense under the IPC, and it could be interpreted that the moment you're offering food to a street animal, you are littering the space, and uh, uh, you are uh, under the provisions of the IPC. You are uh, 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 you have committed an offense. If it is you know if it is interpreted that way, that that could could be the fallout. Okay, so. Um... I'm a little confused. I thought it's, I right. thought um, if a member of society uh, um, decides that they wanted to feed the stray dogs, that they're allowed to do so. And, they, and the, so you're saying that the RWA has to be get involved and say, okay, you um, <clears throat> you are allowed to. The, feed uh, I, okay, I'll give you an example. Okay. What uh, what the BMC has in the recent uh, past, in, I think in the last six seven years. What they have started doing is they have uh, started putting collars on street dogs and they identify the street dog by writing the area that they are from. Now, if there is a dog that does not have that collar, the BMC is in that sense is also. Uh, so those dogs that have collars are basically taken care by the community. It is a registered dog that is taken care of by the community. If there is a dog that is not taken care of by the community and does not have that uh, collar, then uh, it is, in, in a sense, it becomes a property of the BMC and the BMC has a right to take away that dog. If there is an individual that wants to take care of a dog that has the collar, as long as that, that dog is fed in the designated space where uh, the, the RWA has provided space for, uh, is the animal is fed there, there is no problem at all. If that dog is fed in any space other than that designated area or in, pri in a private space. So, for example, if that uh, member decides that, okay, within his uh, society compound, he wants to feed that animal, as long as the RWA is fine with it, nobody can stop him from doing that. But if he uses public space to do that, without the permission of the RWA, without the permission of the BMC, and not in a space which is designated for feeding that animal, then he can be uh, 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 said to have committed an act, uh, uh, an offense under the IPC. So a good way, Mohit, to yeah. look at this uh, would be, to break yeah. it down, would be yeah. that there is a community, yeah. there's a housing society, the housing society on its own decides 
yeah. taking members together and say that yeah. we are going to adopt specific community animals and take care yeah. of them. Yeah. That's one incident. Then there is a specific member of a community that on their own will decide that I individually want to take care of this animal. Yeah. And that would basically mean feed it. Yeah. And any other responsibilities that go along with it. Yeah. But that does not automatically add responsibility on that community per se no. to take care of that animal. No. One. So to look at it this way is that if as an individual you are taking responsibility of feeding an animal, yeah. the law could be interpreted uh, in a way where the responsibility of that animal's behavior may fall on you. And yeah. we've seen similar incidences in Mumbai across. Yeah, where specific, uh, you know, caregivers who are feeding yeah. animals, uh, stray animals or community animals, so to speak, have been held responsible for that animal sort of attacking somebody. Yeah, right. That's a good way to look at it. See, uh, sorry to just interject there. Um, the 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 BMS the animal birth control rule provides that every dog has to be registered. And there is a whole licensing process that is that is there that has to be taken from the municipality act. So there's a whole licensing process. Right. Now, if there is a dog that is so all these dogs that, you know, if there is a stray dog that is being taken care of by the community, it has to be a licensed community dog. So it is not that uh, the uh, you right. can just put a uh, put a, uh, uh, a collar around the dog's uh, neck and say that this is a community dog. It's it doesn't work that way. You have to be right. a licensed uh, the dog has to be licensed. Now, if there is a dog that a that a that a that a person wants to take care, which is on the street, not licensed, primarily you could register it as a community dog and then try to then take care because it is not a private dog because you're not taking him in captivity in your captivity. You are keeping, you're not domesticating. You're not domesticating it. I mean, I use the word captivity because that is that what the law says. That's a law. Yeah. So as long as you're not domesticating it, it will still be considered as a community dog. And you would have to license it as a community dog. Then even if you're licensing it as a community dog and the community doesn't want to really take care of that dog, for all for all practical reasons and purposes, the dog will still be registered in your name, but under the category of a community. So then as, all, as you being the primary caregiver. Yeah. And uh, so effectively all uh, uh, all responsibility and obligations that come along with the license will then fall on you. So you, you so, it, so you would be responsible for neutering for vaccination. Absolutely, absolutely. As individual, not yeah. not yeah. the BMC. Not the, see the BMC as I said earlier will take care only if there is a dog which is not being licensed as a community ah. dog or a private dog. And uh, so I think the same a... same logic applies to cats as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, so so there's a difference in the cat. Now what happens mm -hmm. in a cat is that the uh, uh, the BMC uh, uh, sorry the municipality has a licensing process also for that but the difference is that uh, cats are not given collars and uh, right. so if there is a community that is taking uh, taking care of a of a cat there is no requirement for the community to register themselves with the authorities as because there is a licensing process for a community uh, for a community cat um but if there is again a cat which is not taken care of by the community, the BMC or the municipality takes it away. Okay, so we have a few questions that are coming in live. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brian is asking, I, we've already covered this. I really just have a very basic question. These societies that do not allow stray dogs, how yeah. can we fight for the dogs? What rights should we know really? I mean, uh, to answer this, you really have to uh, 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 go through the, uh, I mean, you complain to the uh, to the municipality under the animal birth control dog rules and, uh, and uh, 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 set into motion the fact that uh, the community is, you know, uh, uh, refusing to take care of an animal. And because you are taking care of the animal, they are stopping you from doing that. If your local municipality act provides for a licensing process, then it would always be better to get the dog licensed uh, in your personal name so that uh, you nobody can then stop you from uh, uh, taking care of that dog. So there is, Brian, here a nuance as well, right? Uh, you have yeah. to look at the fact that uh, if you want the community to allow you to take care of a specific tree, you will need their buy-in. 
you cannot force their back right uh, you may want to fight it legally yeah. but having said that a community is represented by a body which is probably in most housing societies the managing committee or some yeah. sort of committee within that society yeah yeah uh, a community is made up of multiple members who are aside from the managing committee yeah. it would ideally work well if you take the courtesy sort of human approach and try and turn people on to bringing them on your side it's yeah. all where and good that you want to go fight it out legally and you know we get very obtrusive animals have rights i am going to fight for that yeah. yeah let's face it if you want a society to accept it you need buy in and which is voluntary right. in nature legally pushing them to do something would also mean that you've sort of antagonized them and there's always going to be friction there so the primary approach here needs to be a human first approach where you try and get buy in from these people yeah. also remember that if you want to take care of a community animal on community grounds in which case i'm being specific within a gated community for which it is co-owned by the community itself a housing society you yeah. will need their permission so sure. the community cannot prevent you but you will also have to have provisions in place and bylaws that allow you to do that which will only be enacted by the community and its managing committee so uh, so when you when you uh, when you say seek permission are you saying like a written permission or you just say a general acceptance of the of uh, of uh, uh, a uh, of of allowing you to take care of a dog that is what you mean a general acceptance i would assume so yes okay because uh, because as i said earlier there is no a requirement of a uh, of any any dog owner or a animal uh, sorry or a member of a society that uh, uh, to take care of a, of a street dog to take permission of that society uh, it is all a licensing process at the end of the day it's all a licensing process also look at it from the fact that look if you want to take care of a stray dog that's living on the streets and that street, those streets are owned by the municipal corporation specifically yeah. Yeah. you don't need any society permission but also remember that you can't bring that dog into a society premises without the permission of the society that's why i said earlier like that's a very there is a so yeah. that's what i said earlier that if there is a if there is a, uh, a member of a society which wishes to feed a animal from the, on the street and uh it does not really have the acceptance of the of the rwa to feed that dog in in the premises of the society and if there is no designated spot available for uh, to feed that animal then the only way that he can do is get the get a license for the dog inform the uh, um, uh, inform the authorities where you will be feeding that dog so you will have to designate that space and seek right. permission from the authorities to feed that animal only in that designated space now we have um, nikita singh she's asking what are the key differences between wild animal protection laws and laws related to domestic animals in india yeah so uh so as i said earlier um schedule 1 to 6 of the wildlife protection act um, list down animals that are animal birds and plants that cannot be domesticated those are the properties of the state the wildlife protection act provides for uh, the formation of natural reserves um, and sorry national reserves sanctuaries and zoos so the only exception to uh, keeping the uh, uh, keeping the um, uh, scheduled animals in captivity is provided within that act uh, uh, in, uh, for keeping them in a zoo it also then that the wildlife protection act also then talks about how animals cannot be used for uh, experiment uh, experimentation similar provisions are there even in the prevention of cruelty to animals that animals cannot be uh, used for experimentation and so 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 that's a broad uh, uh, broad overview of the wildlife protection act prevention of cruelty to animals it applies generally whether it is for wildlife or for uh, for domesticated animals or even for animals that are strayed uh uh and 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 then you have the ipc and the uh, uh and the provisions of the municipality act which really covers what is the responsibility of the state and the responsibility of the citizen okay then uh, mayur is asking what are the yes. legal requirements for owning exotic animals as pets in india so what are exotic animals 
I mean, uh, <laughs> because if you have, if like, you have, like, like, like if you like want to be like Mike Tyson and get a snake. pet tiger. <laughs> yeah. So Wildlife Protection Act uh, prohibits you from doing that. And if you have one, just in case, like uh, someone has a snake. Okay. So okay. So if or a spider. Okay, if there is a if if there is a snake now, depending on the breed of the snake, if it is listed in the schedule of the Wildlife Protection Act, then you then either you give it up, you disclose it and you give it up, or you disclose it, take a license to keep it, and you can then keep it. So, uh, as I understand it, that Anand Ambani has kept these exotic animals, which he imported. <laughs> Uh, uh, there, there is some buzz going around that he picked them up from, from the uh, Indian national uh, uh, national reserves and sanctuaries. That's not the case. Uh, he imported them, and uh, he obviously uh, got the licenses done from the uh, got the licenses to import, got the licenses to keep them, and he has now created this private zoo, uh, and uh, it's all under license. So uh, license are, licenses are given. There is no. Uh, 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 there is no uh, uh, ban on keeping them. Licenses are given, but obviously you need to have your reasons for having such an animal. If there is a tiger uh, that you want to keep, uh, which is known to be uh, not friendly to uh, uh, within a human population, I am not saying that the tiger will just on its own go and attack somebody, but that's the nature of the animal. Then you will have to have reasons to why you want to have a tiger in your house. And honestly, uh, imagine, adding imagine adding a <laughs> adding a bit of humor to it, I don't think Bombay houses, given <laughs> its actual sizing and pricing, are actually ideal to have exotic animals per se, sure. specifically sure. tigers. Just unless no you're place. unless you're staying in Goregaon, where a, a leopard, <laughs> you have to very often. Then you'll have to get it licensed as a community yeah. animal before you can adopt it. But you know the 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 joke about this was that a few years ago there were a lot of uh, leopard sightings in societies, yes. and um, the government not the government but uh, obviously the opposition wanted to go after the government on this, uh, and uh, uh, there were these uh, 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 protesters outside the uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park, right outside the main gate of uh, of that park, and they had posters saying "Leopards go back" as if the leopards knew how to read and they would actually go back. <laughs> oh my god! But I I remember I remember one very distinct um video yeah. where a leopard came in very silently. This yeah. is again uh, I think Sanjay Gandhi Sanjay Gandhi sure. all the buildings that surrounding it very silently came and took away the stray dog that had been sleeping there. That yeah. was it was quite and that's it. It was just gone in um in like a blink yeah. of an eye. It was gone. I remember that. Uh, video very well. So, like the leopards go back. Like yeah. we've taken over their territory. Yeah. Then Anupama Anupama has a question. Yeah. Um, in a recent report, it was shared that dog bite cases have risen by twenty six point five percent, almost two point seven five million incidences in twenty twenty three alone, which is huge. What are your views on this? You want to take it? Uh, humans and animals have been in conflict for. Since I think we started, uh, the way to look at it would be to figure out ways to coexist. If we encroach upon spaces that are not meant for us, uh, you will always be in conflict. Uh, specifically to stray dogs, uh, dog bite cases. Let's remember, uh, most dogs are not aggressive in nature. Most stray dogs are more are basically uh, coming from other dogs that have been sort of domesticated and figured out a way to coexist in human populations. These are not wild dogs that we talk about. This is not packs of wild dogs or hyenas that lived in jungles. These are stray dogs living in spaces that we coexist in with them. A good way to look at them is to basically look at treating them humanely. To bring down incidents as much as possible. Having said that, do remember that not to sort of demean this in any way, but there are more incidents of humans killing humans than dogs killing humans. Okay, let's put context to how we can figure out to coexist in better ways. The laws can only provide guidelines and do you know tell you what's legal, what's not. Uh, 
as humans what we can figure out is to be able to treat animals better so that the cases of conflict and friction reduce organically i don't i hope that answers but it's more of a philosophical answer and less of a action driven sort of thing but i think fundamentally it's about behavior change and accept interesting but there are also been incidences recently where stray dogs have unfortunately they have um, attacked a child and killed on um which brings me to this next question now if a stray dog or a pet is a threat to human life or has attacked or killed someone under indian law indian law does the dog get taken away to be euthanized what what happens over there uh so they are taken uh, so they are they're seized by the authorities that would be your municipal corporation or your gram panchayat they are taken over uh they are taken to a, a, a to the kennel they are uh, rehabilitated there if they find that the animal is uh, not uh, in the uh, i mean the violent instinct is uh, is not the, it's not a passing phase so to speak uh then obviously depending on what the uh, animal welfare board decides because there is a committee that will decide on whether the animal has to be put down the uh, uh, the, the 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 committee will meet they will take all parameters into consideration and it's, they decide but euthanizing the animal is not the first step okay but uh, say for example a stray dog has um uh, or a pack of whatever stray dogs has killed yeah. a child yeah then what 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 action is supposed to be taken they will take it away so they will take the they will take the okay. dog away and uh, they will they will always be the first attempt to rehabilitate uh, okay. if that rehabilitation is uh, the the authorities find that it's impossible to rehabilitate they will make a recommendation to euthanize the animal welfare board will then consider the uh, recommendation and then they will decide whether they whether the animal has to be put down or not so a good way kanchi to look at this is uh... if there are a pack of dogs that are exhibiting pack behavior of essentially scouring hunting uh that kind of thing it's always best to stay away uh, if you have this and you are let's say to give you more context and put it in a specific case scenario if there is a housing society that has a pack of dogs these are stray dogs or community dogs slash they may qualify as community dogs or not we don't know uh the best step a society can take and this is coming from a pet parent the best step that the society can take to prevent any conflict or any of these incidents happening is to follow up with the authorities report this and get it addressed do not wait as a pet parent i understand the animal as rights but once the set of animals start exhibiting pack mentality it's best to get the authorities involved get animal behaviorists involved to address the issue as soon as possible do not wait for incidents like this to happen because at some point it's going to happen it's the nature of the animal there will be a conflict right and as animals they are going to try and go for the weakest prey that they can find unfortunately that is always going to be a child or another small animal having said that the logical thing to do here would be to report to the authorities get animal behaviorists involved to figure out a way to tackle the situation in a way that the rights of those pack of animals or individual animals are not infringed upon also not leading to any human animal conflict in that sense please do not go on a war path in terms of animal rights and say yes these are a pack of dogs they have rights if it leads to conflict the animals are going to be taken away it's best to be proactive and address those issues using the mechanisms that do exist already in law then also now the recent um ban now the central government has imposed a ban on import sale and breeding of 23 dog breeds now what if you own one what what needs to be done uh, you inform the authorities uh you seek a fresh license um the authorities will give you the license if they find uh that you have given a compelling reason for uh, for keeping that animal as a pet do you need to um sterilize them so then they don't it is your responsibility anyways so as per the as per the existing laws it is your responsibility as a pet owner to sterilize immunize feed and do whatever is whatever is required to be done for the animal 
um and and uh, uh the the after the ban uh, the the notification says that a fresh licensing will have to be obtained um uh, you will have to inform the authorities that i have an animal which is which is in the ban list and uh, uh, and uh, I, uh, and uh, and then seek a fresh license actually this is not the first first time that 23 breeds have been uh, have been banned earlier there were eight breeds that were banned and now there are 23 so the, now there are 31 in total also guys all, they, guess, uh, they as, call as, them dangerous breeds so the the, uh, the 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 reason why they have banned them is because they they aggression they exhibit behavior you know, all they have said is dangerous breed they have not used the word violent or anything else. They just call them dangerous breed. So someone in the government has decided these specifics using their expertise, consulting, etc. It to was, designate these breeds as dangerous and then have put a control on So basically the Animal Welfare uh, Board of India sure. uh, made a recommendation that these 23 breeds are to be banned. And this sure. recommendation was, was made as far back as 2017-2018. It is the government that uh, considered the recommendation and based on, uh, they in fact, uh, they had uh, um, in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, they had placed uh, uh, a fresh law uh, before the parliament to uh, to uh, to ban uh, these 23 breeds. But they withdrew that bill because they realized that under the act, they can anyways do that. Uh, then they formed a committee, the department, the the. The state, the central government formed a committee of uh, experts who then agreed with the recommendation, and then this has now come to final solution. And yeah. as a caveat, uh, as a pet parent, uh, as a responsible pet parent, my advice to everyone is try and not go for exotic dogs or cats. The this is more of a human thing to do. Siberian huskies don't belong in India. We cannot acclimatize to the climate. You may be rich, rich enough to refrigerate them, air condition them through the day, but they will never acclimatize. They do not belong here. It applies to pretty much every exotic animal. Don't try and transplant an animal because it makes you look fancy into an environment where they don't belong. Tropical climates aren't really meant for that. Uh, there's no argument to be made that there have been huskies in India for 20 years, so they were acclimatized. Doesn't work. Get there are enough breeds of dogs, cats available that can be adopted and housed and given a good life. Uh, just do the human thing, get dogs, cats, animals that are acclimatized to where you reside. Uh, I uh, there was one question that had come live. Uh, Deepa is asking, Is there any specific education needed to specify in animal law? Or oh, I think specialize in animal, not that I've heard of, but I'm quite certain that there would be some. Uh... Uh, diploma courses that are being offered by uh, by university uh, by institutes, because I don't think there is any uh, specific uh, degree that uh, any university is offering in that. Wouldn't wouldn't it sort of fall under constitutional law, and then you know people specializing in specific in terms of rights, and mm -hmm. then that expands to animal. I mean, uh, what what really happens typically in India? I, I mean, I'm not I'm not, I'm talking India uh, India specific. Um, once uh, you are a, once you become a lawyer, technically, then after a few years, you start specializing whatever laws laws that you 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 sure. find interest in, and, and um, uh, animal rights, human rights, really speaking, are something that a lot of uh, uh, human rights activists, I mean, they replicate their their experience in in both both fields. And really speaking, animal animal rights in that sense, it's not a very vast subject that uh, somebody would really take it up as a as the only expertise. So we've um, come to the end of this session. Um, it, um, basically, how would you summarize or just give us a little the key takeaways from this conversation? Basically, all I, all I know is that um, there are laws, then there is <laughs> the API. And then the RWAs, and then the specific, yeah. specific guidelines that you need yeah. to follow. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, uh, apart from law, yeah. basic um, courtesy and human civic sense. Uh, so, um, I mean, first thing is that just li license your dogs. That is the first thing that yeah. you should. And not a not not a lot of people do that. Uh, it really costs a very nominal fee. Just get it done. It 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 just protects the. It protects you. It, it helps the animal, and it protects the uh, the society that you live in and and once you have a license i mean look at it from this way 
if you have a license, really it's a fate accompli for the society. What can they do once you have the license? Uh, second is that um, the laws are there. I mean, uh, it it obviously we know that how laws in India are implemented. Uh, implementation is very poor. So uh, if if even if I even if the law says that a designated spot has to be created by the RWA, not many RWAs really create that designated space. Uh, I'm I'm quite certain that a lot of RWAs do not even know that a designated space has to be created because obviously nobody reads, and um, and uh, uh, so so primarily it is good to know good to know the law. But um, uh, from the uh, from the aspect of uh, of of uh, just basic etiquettes, follow what a pet owner would would generally do. Uh, you cannot control a, a a person who does not have an animal because he obviously doesn't understand that psyche. But uh, as long as you are a responsible pet owner, I think uh, uh, it will go far more in in. Uh, uh, in educating the the uneducated than you know getting onto the war path. Likewise, uh, just to add to Mohit, simplify it, register your dog, familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with uh, laws, bylaws that are applicable at a municipal level geographically to where you reside in, because they may vary from place to place. Uh, follow basic human etiquettes. What applies to you applies to your pet. They are your primary responsibility. They are part of your family. Do what you would do in public. Don't do what you would not do in public. Don't allow your pet to do it and expect society to accept it as a given. Uh, put in extra effort as pet parents. Uh, it's stacked against you. So put in the extra effort of helping the society accept you better as a pet family and just make it easier on everybody. Uh, as a... Uh, Add on to this, at Pet Chef, we are actually working on putting some resources together to help people understand and sort of have something available to them. And we will have this out on our website uh, in, in due course. But having said that, thank you so much for putting this together, Thinkly, uh, Pet Chef, Kangshi, yeah. and Mohit. Yeah, it was you. a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much for to both of you for taking the time out and uh, Moet, especially this has been very, very enlightening. So at least I also learned a few things, especially now since stray, uh, feeding stray dogs has become a big um, topic of conversation of yeah. late. So this yeah. was a very, very important conversation to have. So once again, thank you so much to the both of you. Thank and you. Maybe, we'll, maybe we'll, we'll talk about some other um, topic with regards to the laws on Pets and stray animals probably will bring you back Perfect. later. As a, as a thing, Kangshi and Moet, Moet, if people want to reach out to you, find you in terms of getting guidance, seeking guidance on laws, legalities yeah. around yeah. animals, uh, how how may they be able to find you? Um, so if you want to just put address, out your socials, uh, yeah. connect, so connect etc. Yeah, so I'm yeah. unfortunately not on social media. So <laughs> I, I am only contactable on emails. Uh, right. So my email address is mohit.arora83 at gmail.com. Um, you, you. Can, you can probably find me on petchef.co.in or um, at Kamshi Mehta Instagram handles. So if you need, if you have any questions, please, please, please or you can go or you can reach out to Thinkly as well, or the Thinkly community. Perfect. Please Likewise for me, Thinkly. available on social media is Knuckle Ruparel. Uh, so across uh, X, Instagram, email, uh, knuckle at petchef.co.in and happy to help out people. We are very passionate pet parents and uh, co-founders at Pet Chef and we're happy to help out the community as much as possible. Thank and before we, leave, before we leave, I think we should have one session just on wildlife animals. Yes, that should be Absolutely. fun. <laughs> That's next on queue. Yeah. Especially with all the people owning the exotic um, yeah. parrots. Yeah. Uh, 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 once you put it out, probably Anantha Pani can also join us. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> Great. It was really, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. you too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.